Eccoci, bentornati a Lavoro di Pratiche Sociali. E oggi pomeriggio siamo con Lidia Bassiglia che è già stata con noi lunedì eh, e oggi parlandoci dell'idea del di bene comune. Oggi invece Alzea ci racconta eh, dell'esperienza di Lugo Comanditel, in Petron, se italiano e committenti, e di appunto questa nuova idea di, di partecipazione rispetto alla, ai processi legati alla produzione di di opere d'arte che appunto parte, parte dal basso e parte appunto dalla, dalla volontà di uh, comunità specifiche. So thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me again. Um, <laughs> So uh, I will I will today I wanted to the other day I was talking about the commons and the public in a more general way or a more theoretical way and I was showing you a couple of examples that I had been researching not so much things I had done myself but things that I had been looking at from other people that I thought were very interesting and uh so today uh what I'm going to present you is something that has can have some links with it or it for me it has some links with it uh, it's a project I'm involved in um, and uh, well I'm, I'm, I'll explain a bit about the the platform uh, it's actually a project that is it's not a project that I am doing on my own uh, the case I'm going to explain is one that I am mediating or curating but actually the, the it it is it depends or it comes from a from a much bigger project that is called new patrons in english or nouveau commanditaire in in french and uh, the the subtitle for this uh, platform or this way of working is called art for the civil society and uh, i don't know if i so the the principle for this for how this platform works and I will explain more about the platform right now is uh, that anyone who wishes alone or in association with others and especially in association with others like in groups of people can call upon an artistic mediator to help them take responsibility for the commissioning of an artwork so the idea is rather that uh, if you let's say that generally Art in the public spaces, or art related to institutions, is normally ordered by an institutional person or a group from the institutional, uh, from an institutional group, who sometimes delegate in a, in some experts, but normally just decide who are going to be the people who are going to do the works of art, what kind of work of art is going to be done, where it's going to be placed, uh, what it has to commemorate. Uh, and very often it happens, I think we all have the experience, that these kind of artworks, sometimes they are in the middle of the space and you don't know very well why they are there or what do they represent or people don't feel very attached to them or people have other preoccupations or other intentions that they would have preferred to have represented. So the idea of this program is that uh, instead of doing from the top to the bottom, you go from the bottom up and you take the people who do live in that place, use that p space or, 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 or share these uh, concerns, uh, they are the ones who actually take part in a group to decide what are the principles that the work of art has to fulfill. So it is a way of working uh, that uh, I will explain exactly how it, the whole process is so that you understand how this is done. Uh, but first, this is the web page. Right, it's here. So, uh, that is the web page. If you put newpatrons.eu, it also appears so you can go to English or French. Um, uh, well, as I was saying, the platform, uh, the platform was uh, created in 1992. So this program is not new at all. It has been running for more than 20 years. Uh, it started in France and uh, it's under the, um, it's under the patrocine or the, the, the help of uh, an entity that is called La Fondation de France, the, the Foundation of France, which is, if we talk about uh, funding models that we were talking before, it is a quite interesting platform because it's a way that the French government uh, invented to uh, organize the public fund, uh, the private funding that was dedicated to culture and social needs. So if you are a person with a lot of money and you want to organize your money, uh, give your money to a social cause, artistic cause or whatever, and you don't know very well where to give it or how to 
do it in a way that it goes to really interesting projects, then what you can do is you can give that money, say how much money you want to give to this foundation, which is a state foundation, but is managed independently. And this foundation has ha has a number of programs, so they get to you and say like, okay, if you want to invest in art, for example, we have the Nouveau Commanditaire, we have this and this and this. So the people who are giving that private money, they can choose if they want to give it, for example, for the arts or to culture or to theater or to social working or to international cooperation. But then it's the foundation, the one that gives the work. So actually, uh, they are the one who are distributing it equally between the projects that they accept. So uh, it is an interesting way of, we were talking about funding, and it's an interesting way of uh, using private money, but uh, distributing it in a way that is not just dependent on the on the needs on or the wants of the of the funders. Um, so that's where part of the money for this platform came from, because the Fondation de France uh, has a, has a mission to respond to the necessities of uh, and the and the needs of culture and society. So they thought that this project of the new commandit and the nouveau commanditaire or the new patrons that it was really interesting because it could uh, provide for a way for people to engage with art and to engage with their uh, environment that wasn't that easy to do in in a smaller scale. So actually, the idea came from an artist who is called François Hers, and uh, he considers this project as his art project in the same way that Anton Bedocle considers Ixux his art project. So his art project is actually this platform, and he is nowadays. I don't know if he's the director or, well, I mean, I don't know exactly what's the name, or like president, honorary president, but he's still involved. He's been involved for these 20 years. Mm. And the way in which it works is the following. Uh, there is, uh, I don't know, well, I, I have to say, this is the new, new web page. It just got into service like uh, a month ago, so I'm not so familiar with it, so it must be that I have to look a little bit. Um, but the, you can you can see it because it's quite interesting and I recommend, I'm not going to put any videos now, but I recommend you to go to the video part because there you have some projects, some selected projects that they follow from the beginning to the end. So you can see the whole process, how it worked. You can see interviews with the people who were involved as, 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 as commanditaire, as patrons. And it's a good way to understand how the, how the how the project goes, but they are like 20 minutes small short films, so that's why I'm not playing them because they are a little bit long. But if you're interested, I think they are in French and subtitled in English, I think, or at least some of them are. So the idea, the way in which the platform works is that it functions by, that's what I was trying to see if there is, um, no, this is this. Um, mm, wait. I'm going to see that here. As I was saying, I'm not that familiarized with the. Oh, you can see me there. Uh. <laughs> uh, no, there used to be a map, but I don't know what it is anymore. Well, the thing is that there are different offices. So the offices are regional, are specific from a place. It started in France, so it was in different different parts of France, and each office has. Uh, normally one mediator and sometimes it depends on the office how many projects they have and so on they often have someone who takes care of finances or, or administration production it depends they can be quite big or quite small they are normally not huge they are normally like three four people maximum uh, and uh, and they work normally in a region so they are located for example in the there is one in, there is i think there are two in paris and then a couple in the outskirts of paris because it's a quite populated place and and there are few projects going on there but then for example you have one in marseille and the one in marseille was very important in the marseille capital of culture th 2013 because they did i think six projects that started two years before and they were doing ongoing until the until um, the opening of the of the city of culture, uh, there is one, for example, in Bordeaux, which takes like the whole area of, Bo of Bordeaux and down uh, to Aquitaine until the until the border of Spain, so where we are in the Basque Country. 
so you have like different uh, offices and each of them works in a specific region. So that is something very important because actually it is very much locally engaged. Like I, I wouldn't go to Belgium to make a project. They have their office there. And it's really strange that uh, that a mediator works outside from the place that he or she knows. It's generally you work in your context. It's a it's a broader context because it's a region. Doesn't mean that you know everything about everything there, but at least you have a grasp of the culture, of the language, of the people, of how things are organized. And then, yeah, yeah, but uh, there is per region and per country. So I mean, there is per region. Each office has a region. So, and then there are in different. Co it started in France, and then it has gone out to other countries. Yeah, but you say that uh, your office is not taking care of uh, no. the of the national thing. Yeah. No, no. I think this is quite important. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's not a national schema. And for example, it's not that there is this money for France, this money for Italy, this money for Belgium. It, it's by office. It's depending on the number of projects you do, depending on the projects you are doing and what you need. It, that's the money you get. It's not, it's not like national based or anything. And for example, there have been, there are also offices that come up and disappear. Like there have been offices who have done two projects and then for some reason they have stopped, they disappear. So you can, or you are for two years where, because many of the mediators. Uh, some of them work exclusively in this, some people work in other things, so it, sometimes it has happened that someone leaves for one year because they are doing something else, so that year there's no projects, and it's like in standby, and then you come back, it can happen too. Um, so the region is uh, the geographical region, or it can be an expanded idea of the uh, region? There is not a specificity on that, I think it's quite free to propose what you want. But uh, generally, you work with a with a geographical region as in terms of practicalities. Because, for example, in my case, well, so uh, just as a summary, there are I don't know how many there are, but there are like ten or twelve offices in France. Then there are there are two big offices in Belgium. And for example, because Belgium is quite small, they work together actually. I mean, they are in two different cities, but they 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 work together, and there's like one coordinator for the two but they have different mediators that they engage depending on how many projects they have. Then there's one in the north of Italy, which is located in Torino. And uh, I think they work with the whole area of Piemonte. And, uh, uh, and then uh, there, there are three or four in Germany. There's one in Berlin, one that works from Berlin, but in Brandenburg, so in the outskirts. There is one that is not doing any projects now in Hamburg, that uh, well, Nina Mondmann was the mediator. And, uh, but she did one project, now she's not doing any projects, but she might do something in the future. And then there are a couple, there's, I think there's one in Köln, in Colonia, and uh, there are a couple more. Uh, so it depends on, they can be more or less active. There has been projects in Sweden too, a, a couple of big projects in Sweden in the past. And um, so it's region, and then it's us in the Basque country. We have just started two years ago. and. Uh, um, and for example, we do the Basque Country. If someone from, it's not that we are close to the Basque Country, like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Now it can be that there is a project starting in Africa, in Nigeria, that they are setting a, a, an office in Nigeria. It's not European based. I mean, it doesn't have to be European based. It's French. Uh, it it started in France. And it has spread to different places, but uh, but it doesn't have to be in Europe. There's no kind of, yeah. No, actually, in the last meeting we had, these are the pictures of the last meeting we had, all the mediators, there was the proposition of someone from Germany who had established contact with someone in Nigeria, and they were thinking about opening an office in Nigeria with people from Nigeria. Like going from Germany and explaining them how to work well how the process goes and work a little bit together, but then establishing an office in Nigeria with Nigerian people. So it's, it doesn't have to be European, it can be anywhere. Um, and uh, yeah, and the regional thing, like it doesn't have to be geographically uh, centered in one place. Like for example, we are in Bilbao, Bilbao is very close to, uh, to Santander. It's like 50 kilometers from Santander. It's another region politically, but 
if we had a a proposition to do something from there, I, I don't. I, Google, we wouldn't have a problem with that. It's not you don't have a limitation. You can come to here or not at all. You establish where you work. But in terms of practicalities, too, it's like well, I couldn't. For example, I cannot do a project in Catalonia because I cannot be traveling to Catalonia. I cannot be meeting with people in Catalonia every week because I just cannot go to Catalonia every week. So in the way of working of the process, it asks for some time that you are very present, present so you cannot be from very far away. So how it works is that generally the idea is that a group of people uh, well, I'm I'm doing like a small introduction for those who arrived now. Uh, I'm talking about the new patrons program. Uh, which is a program to wait. I'm going to show you the sentence because I think it's a good resume. It's uh, anyone who wishes alone or in association with others can call upon an artistic mediator to help them take responsibility for the commissioning of an of, of an artwork. So it's a it's a um, it's a way of uh, promoting art that where the let's say the interest comes from uh, the bottom up and not from the institutions directly to the uh, specific spaces. So uh, the way in which it works generally for offices that have been established and working for a long time is that normally a group of people, sometimes an association, sometimes just a very random group of people uh, who have a common interest, uh, some, sometimes people from an institution that I will show to, approach the office and say that they want to do a work of art, that they are <coughs> they would like to do, engage in the process of making a work of art relating to something they're interested. And this something they are interested can be really, really broad. It can be from something very practical, like we have this space that we don't know how to use that is very unfunctional and we want to see how an artist can help us to make it more functional. Or it can be, for example, like one, last, one of the last projects that they were starting when we had the last meeting in Belgium, that was that uh, there was a group of people who wanted to uh, remember, well, they were from an, a neighborhood that was called uh, like the 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 Little River, because it was in Brussels and that used there used to be a little river there and then it was covered to make the street, so they didn't want to take it out or anything like that, but they wanted to <laughs> think about this memory of the Little River and the fact of being called like that and that place being like a land, but it was like very unclear what was going to be because it could be something like a theater piece, it could be a monument, it could be completely different things. So they had to define how they wanted to address this idea. So the idea was chosen or they presented the idea, but it was not clear what there was going to be. So sometimes it's something very direct, but sometimes, it, sometimes it's something very abstract and can take many forms. So the idea is they approach the office and then they start working with a mediator. So the mediator, to understand, is the curator, is, let's say, the, the expert in art, but uh, the, the work of the mediator is to uh, meet with that group of people and try to define which are the basic ideas that we are going, that we want to address with the work. What do we want the work of art to address? So, and that again, I will show you the one we are doing now. So you will see it cannot be super specific because then it's not really, you're not leaving any space for the artist to react to it, but it can give some ideas to the artist of what are the, the, the intentions of the people and what they want to get. So, um, once you have this idea, you normally you do different meetings with the people to 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 arrive to this conclusion, and it's like uh, like the it's like uh, what's the name in English? Uh, then that sentence or that two sentences or paragraph or main idea is your like your boarding card. It's like what you what you're using as your as your route uh, as your map for the project, and thinking of that as a mediator, then you think who as an artist could be interested in doing something like that and could bring up an interesting idea responding to these ideas responding to it doesn't mean that and uh, doesn't mean that it has to be exactly the same it can be also provocative or it can also like twist it or it, ca it can be i mean the people who are the 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 commanditaire or the patrons they also accept that they are working with an artist that is not you know it's not like you have to do this it's going to be this you give an idea to an artist of what you want and they also have the right of proposing something back that is not exactly what you expected actually this is quite encouraged that that it doesn't have to be literally what you what you want so um 
or what you expected. So w as a mediator, you meet with them, you try to define this idea, and then you invite an artist. And then depending who you invite, what's the project, then it can be whatever. So it can really change a lot. But well, this is the way in which it works as a general basis. Yeah, if you have any questions, interrupt me at any time. Uh, no problem at all. So I was saying this is the web page and it's new. It's like one month old, so I don't exactly know where are the things. I mean, there was one before, but <laughs> this is the new one. And uh, if you want to have a look, you can work by mediators. Uh, you can look by artists and by works. Uh, and I think not all the, for example, our project is still not uploaded because I, I still have to send <coughs> some information. Uh, <laughs> but uh, some problem, the ones that are finished, most of them are there. And I was also saying, the video part is very interesting because there are, I think there are six videos um, from uh, projects that have already been done and that have been taken from the beginning to the end. So they are they are really nice to see how the projects were done. So it's very it's very good to see the process. Then also the size of the projects can be really really different. So sometimes you have projects that are can be really small and quite quick. And then you have projects that are huge. I'm going to show you a, a huge one that can take four, five, six years. And uh, so it can last forever, super expensive, mm, super difficult to arrange everything. So it is also very flexible in that. The program is very flexible in everything, which sometimes is great and sometimes is a pain in the ass. Uh, so it's it's something that, it, I mean, it's, a, an, it's an advantage in general, but you have to like work with that too. So, um, yeah, where? The, the ah, here, yeah. This is the patrons are the commanditaires. It's the group of people who who order the work because the the group of people you work with to defend the idea, they are the ones who then also take responsibility for it. I mean, they are the ones who also appear as you f do sign a contract with them in which they agree with the process and they they let's say take responsibility of following the process too and of of being part of it. It's not that you come one day to one meeting and then you leave and then someone comes another day. I mean, you can do it at the beginning until you know how it works and if you are interested. But then at some point you have to decide if you are going to be committed to the group or not. I mean, you, if you are going to take part or not. It's not like open assembly, everyone can come. So you have to... That is the question. I mean, there are quite a lot of... I'm talking of the general idea how it should work. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. For example, in, in the area of Bordeaux, it happens very often to them that people contact them because they had a couple of big projects that were quite well known, so people know about it. And it's not that it happens every day, but, for example, they got an association of women who had been working with immigrants and wanted to make... And they, they thought by themselves to get in contact with them because they, it happens. But it doesn't happen everywhere the same way. And, for example, in Belgium, what they did was a completely different way of working, which was that they did an arrangement directly with specific cities. So they said, okay, how much money, are you interested in the program? Yeah, how much money, how much projects do you want to make? And they said, like, let's make five. So they did an open call specifically for that city with specific, very specific conditions of production and with the support of that city. So it was an open call and people applied. And for example, in our case, I will explain, since it was the first project, actually, we looked from the, for the, we looked for a group of people who could be interested in participating. So it depends a bit. And then also, of course, people, uh, mediators were telling me, like, uh, well, people who don't know about the project, but if you meet with someone who you think could be interested, then you say it, and then they can speak with someone else, and then at the end, it can be that someone comes to you. So there are different ways. Ideal people can come. That is completely open. Uh, sometimes you look for them too, like you, you offer it, you, you present it to people because it's, it's not always very easy. And uh, you No, you, uh, you, no, you don't select a group of people. You can invite them, but you don't select them. I mean, you, you, you tell them if they want to do it, and if they want to do it, they do it. But uh, what I, I don't know if I said select, but what I mean is like, for example, when we started, no one knows about this project in the country, so it's really difficult, and it's not very easy to explain. For people, sometimes it's difficult to understand. I mean, they explain what you do, but they understand what is going to be the end point 
or how it's going to so uh, so what we did was we talked with different people that we thought could be interested in different sectors and at the end one group came out but we don't select them like if they want to do it mm, unless i mean if Obviously, if it's a group that you see from the beginning that it's super, you have the right to say, no, we're not going to do it because you s they hate each other, they are screaming all the time. It's like, okay, people, you solve your problems and then we talk. But no, <laughs> you, you don't select the people, you select the artist. And then, but actually, you select the artist, the, med the mediator selects the artist, but the group has the right to say no. So there are different parts. I mean, of course, you select the artist and you can you can bring like two options or three, but generally uh, you don't, because what happens is also is that finally it's a quite uh, mixed group of people. So if you take three people, you are going to have, sometimes it happens that you have people who want to work with one, people who with one, people with one, and it's really difficult to come to an agreement. So <laughs> the experience of most mediators is that they generally bring one project if they don't like it, then they bring another one. But they, they kind of bring the first one, and if it doesn't work, the group has the right, the group doesn't have to accept what the mediator brings, it's a proposition. So there are projects in which the mediator has brought something, they haven't liked it, and they have to say, okay, we don't want to continue because it's, we don't like the outcome, and it stops there. You know, uh, Or projects, for example, in which this is more strange, but sometimes they have invited the artist, the artist presents the first idea, the group doesn't like it and the project's not made. That can happen too, because there are two parts also with the artist in terms of contracts that we were talking. You would have to, you first do a uh, pre-project with the artist, the artist has to present a, like a proposition, the artist is paid for this pre-project and then the project is made or not if it happens normally it's made but it can happen that it's not made because the ma and the group doesn't like it or because something works out wrong so you have different but you are paid for the idea it's a little bit like like the the proposition the time you spend for doing the proposition it's paid too um uh, yeah so well you can have a look in here if you want some of the uh, they're super different projects so as an example, I brought uh, a couple of projects just for you to see, because sometimes it's different to imagine what kind of projects can come out or what kind of people can want to do something like that. So I brought a couple that are very different. So this, for example, is a project that was done in a very small town in, in the center of France by an art, a French artist in France. He's quite well known, is Jean-Luc Moulin. I don't know if you know him, but he's got really interesting work. And uh, and he was invited by well this was the group of uh, of shopkeepers of the center of the town it's a very small town and what happened is that apparently they opened these big supermarkets outside of the city and people weren't going to the shops so much and the the shopkeepers were and on the one hand the shopkeepers and then people living in the center of the city were also quite worried because the the life of the city was going down in that in the in the historical center. So they thought they could engage an artist to do a project. So uh, they invited Jean-Luc Moulin, and he's mostly he's he's phot he works mostly with photography. So what he did was actually they wanted something like very straightforward, like uh, that was the uh, the the mediator. Don't like they wanted something like they had a very clear idea of wanting something more like a monument that could attract people, you know. And then he brought Jean-Luc Moulin, and Jean-Luc Moulin said, OK, what we are going to do is uh, Le Page Image. So uh, it's playing with the Le Page Jaune, la, the, the yellow pages. So it's the image pages instead of the yellow pages. So what he did was he stayed, al I don't know how much time, a while on the town. And he took a lot of pictures of the people, of the people of the places like this one, this one, <coughs> like different kinds of images. Oh, no, this is another one. Uh, and uh, what he did was a book with all the images of the town that he gave to the to the people in the like in the to the patrons and the people in the in the in the shops and from the associations in the center to use as they wanted. So the beginning people weren't very happy with the project. They were very surprised because they didn't expect like a series of images that they didn't know very well what to do to with. So then they were working together on how they could be used. So they could be used for advertisement, but they could also be used, for example, they did posters, put them on the walls, and people started to see themselves in these spaces, and they started to 
kind of like to see their image linked to the city and they were used in different ways and this case it's a pity that I didn't I don't remember very well because I, if I knew it was going to be the subject I would have brought it because one of the images he made then was used by a telephone company for a national campaign but he, I don't remember well how it was, so maybe I'm not going to say it right, but as I remember, the rights of use, when the artist gave it to the people in the town, so actually they decided if the image could be used or not, you know, so it, it also became this thing of them being the owners of, the, of their own images and deciding where they wanted to go and how they wanted to use them, and not only like with advertisement things, but also it could be yes to like to have the book of the people on your time. It could be something more sentimental, but it could go into a wall. It could go into different kind of supports. And finally, it was apparently quite <coughs> successful uh, because they also did like this is uh, kind of exhibition with posters. And I know people came very much to see. It. So it was a it was a strange kind of project where there was an object, but the object then was used in different ways. I don't know. It was like. I th he, 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 he gave the book the with book the images and then, and then they could use them as they wanted. They were like the, 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 like the repository of the images that they could use. Portraits, right? And there were people there. Uh, in a lot of them, there are people. Yeah. <coughs> and, so, and these people, they knew that they were in these pictures. Or they yeah, yeah, they knew. They knew. They knew. They they knew. knew. I mean, that I don't know. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you are saying, okay, here you have these pictures, you can do whatever you want with that. I mean, then. Yeah, no, I, no, no. The people knew. They are from the. I mean, it's a very small town, and everyone knew at and saw it. Yeah, I don't know what they signed. I suppose they arranged that. I, that I don't know exactly, but normally there are a lot of contracts and things in the projects, so I suppose probably it was talked about. Yeah, but they knew they were in the images. It's not like he was taking the snapshots and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one, and this is another one. Uh, for example, I brought like very different ones, and this was about a school in in a town next to Marseille, and uh, they the the. the the school was moving to an old factory that had been rehabilitated, so they wanted to play with the students with the idea of what is it uh, the future, what is it the past, and so they invited Suzanne Hetzel, who's a, a, a filmmaker, and Jean-Pierre Ostend, who's actually a writer. So it's not always only visual artists, there can be different kinds of people. Generally it's visual artists, but it doesn't have to be either. And uh, and they did this film, which is Calonu de Venet, like wh what are we going to be, which plays with the idea of these 14 years uh, uh, teenagers who are going to a new school and meeting new people and, and what's the future for them and playing with the idea of the of the place. So it was a, they did a script, uh, Jean-Pierre Ostand did a, um, a script and then they did a film with it in which the children, uh, well the, the teenagers were, uh, it was like a play between the the, the teenagers and then the, the space, the building and um, in this case it was quite participatory with the with the with the teenagers, but it's not always, it doesn't have to be, like it, it's not always the case. But this like to show how it can be like very different formats too. Like it, it can be, there's another one that I didn't bring, but which is actually a, a, a book. It's a, it's a, it's by an artist, but it's a, it's a textbook, which is actually very, very funny, but it's in French, so. Um, and this is one super mega project, for example, uh, which was done, also, I think in Marseille or next to Marseille, uh, and it is. It was in a hospital, uh, and they had this room that used to be the the old chapel, and um, but people weren't using it anymore, or very few people were using it. And the the the, the nurses working in the hospital noticed that a lot of it. It's a hospital. I think it's got a big oncologic part, so it's a part. It's quite hard. And they said that they noticed how people who are not Catholic were also missing a place just to sit and and, and you know and, and be on their own and like process things and and have some tranquility. But of course that they didn't feel very close to the to the to the chapel. Some of them because they weren't religious, and then also because in Marseille there's a big big group of of a very big Muslim community. So they didn't find they that they could 
like enter that place with that sentiment. So they wanted to rehabilitate it, but not make it a church from another religion or whatever, but think about that space. So they invited Pistoletto. They wanted a place like to uh, recueil, so like, like uh, where you can come to yourself and like uh, meditate, relax, yeah, meditate, relax, reflect. Uh, so they invited Pistoletto. And Pistoletto was meeting with different people in the hotel, uh, in, the, in the hospital, and being what kind of like religious, mystic, uh, spiritual needs people had. And he decided to divide the space in different parts. So there's still a Catholic chapel. There's a space uh, for for Muslims. I don't know which one's which, which is directed to the Mecca. There's another one which is for agnostics. There's another one that is something like general spiritual loving of the world like you know like very different things and one that is no uh, like religiously charged at all so it's just a place to sit relax and not relating to any kind of <laughs> spiritual so this for example was a very long process there's a video of this one for example if you want to see it and the group here were mostly uh, nurses i think there was one person who had been at the hospital before and uh, and then a doctor um, and I don't know if someone else, I think a cleaning lady from the hospital, so like people working in the hospital, but not in the representation of the hospital, but in the representation of themselves. And this was a quite long process and it was also quite expensive. So it took <coughs> some years, but it was realized like four years, maybe I'm not sure it's on the work page. So this is like one of the, some of the net like, I don't know. I'm curious. I think they say, of course, in the video they say I, it works, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've never been. The <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's in the hospital. It's it's the like the the old chapel of the hospital. It's yeah, it's open for for use. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. Ah. Yeah. A copy. Uh, a copy. <laughs> that is. A of this. A of this. Yeah. But that is very funny. Yeah, that's amazing. But that is very yeah. funny. It makes no sense. Oh. Yes, yeah. opening in Napoli to this installation. Yeah. yeah, that is super crazy, you know, to have a site specific work reproduced and traveling around. It's site specific, yeah. But because it's circulating a lot, it's not just yeah. there. And, it's, and, and the idea is the same. I mean, the people is using also to, to or not. The, or it's presented as an installation in which people can meditate mm -hmm. and reflect upon different beliefs. But is it circulating in uh, art spaces? Or yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. The art spaces. Art spaces. Art spaces. Art spaces. Art spaces. That is very crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is another thing about the contract that for this thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, I will show it now, but it will be a pro the property of the artist, the association or the, the our office has the option to use the the, the images for for like uh, like you know like making it well known, like uh, for these kind of things. You can you can use it. We can use the images. Um, not for sale, of course, but actually it's going to be a book too. So how could we sell the images? You know, the images are in the book. That's like really not ours. So, uh, uh, or you can buy them if you buy the book. It's not that you, we can sell them separately. And then the the patrons uh, can also use them for any kind of thing that is related to the project. Like, uh, But then, well, I'm going to talk to our pro about our project because actually the, the ideas are going to be in Creative Commons and everyone can use them. So, But our process, our project is based on that, so it's a bit different. So I suppose it depends very much on the work. It, yeah. So, But there is an agreement of use of the business, which I suppose anyways, I can imagine with all the projects that have been and how different some of them are. I'm sure sometimes it happens that it you know something that you hadn't expected because I don't know if like maybe Pistoletto knew that he was going to travel it around and said something and it's in the contract <laughs> but you know I don't think that's something that the mediators of Nouveau Commanditaire thought that Pistoletto was going to travel this around and maybe didn't put it in the contract because they just didn't think about it I don't know yeah 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 this one. Ah, look now I have to get more information about it. <laughs> Maybe. No, uh, actually, they contacted him because he had been working with ideas of religions and spirituality before. That's why they 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 choose him. So probably he had some ideas when he arrived. It was not that it came from zero. What? So, well, that is the explanation of the platform. I don't know if you want to need some... Yeah, I don't. I don't know be because of the place. <coughs> it's but I'm. Hmm? I don't know. I have to look in the web page. I'm not sure. But it's all this, like 2003. Yeah, maybe 2005. I don't know, but it's. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I could I, I think it can happen sometimes that the artist already has an idea. But in this case it's well, maybe he wanted to do an interconfessional place. He had that idea already and then this was the great opportunity to do it. It was like, "Oh, great. Come. <laughs> Let's do it together in a <laughs> hospital thing." <laughs> I don't think in the case of the of the hospital. I think it can be in other projects for sure of of Nouveau Commanditaire. Uh, I don't think it was the case of the hospital. I think they here. I'm guessing uh, there are in the mediators. You have very different people and from very different generations. So you have people who probably have a very close relationship to Pistoletto and just thought of him because they really have a relation to him and work with him, and also in the different generations and understandings of art that you have in the, because of course every office is independent, you do, you know, very different things. So for example, <coughs> you look the list of artists and for example, there are some artists that I would never think of inviting for anything. And not that I don't like their work, but it's not the kind of thing I would do. And then for example, the people in Belgium, they are starting to do things with theater and perform, not so much performance, but especially theater and dance. And there are other, uh, mediators who are more like visual art based and would never do something like that because it's very strange for them. So I think in this specific case, uh, there there are some mediators who really have worked with this generation of artists, so maybe it was a natural thing to think about it. There's also, it's true that sometimes there's the idea of, not in everyone, but in some mediators you can see the idea of if we invite a very good artist, people are going to feel like a very well-known artist, people are going to feel more reassured in the process than if we take someone very young because people will see this idea of the artist in the person. I think that could 
be the case in some mediators' case, but not in all. Depends very much in the person who's doing it. Um, and for example, we are working with. We have only one project right now, but we are working with a young artist, and we said, well, we are not that interested in working with super well-known artists. Is that a problem? And they said, no, you invite whoever you want. Whoever you think responds to the project and is going to be good for it, you invite it. In each of the projects, the money comes from different places depending on the project. So there is a part of the money that can come from the Fondation de France. Normally, not so much for production. Normally, the Fondation de France takes care of the of the uh, of the fees and of the office work, let's say. And then, if I mean, they can help with production, uh, but they don't. They never take the whole of production. So in this case, there was quite a lot of money coming from the hospital itself because they wanted to do it. So why won't they pay it? And then I think they work with another foundation. I don't know, but uh, you ha normally have to take money from other places. It's not that the foundation <coughs> pays for everything. And is that also part of the, the role of the musicians? To so find the money. Find the yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah. the people who are commissioning it commit a certain amount of money as well? Is that always no, the case? No, the people who are commissioning, no, it depends. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's not the case generally because very often, like for example, in the case I'm going to explain about Bilbao, they are people who don't have any association between them. They don't have any kind of wealth institution or anything common, so they don't have to put any money. They have to commit to help you find the money. So, for example, if there's a public fund where they can apply as a group, they they commit to do that. They commit to help in that, but they don't have to bring any money if they can't. But normally, if you work with a bigger institution, like in this case, a hospital, and you are going to do something that is considered an improvement to the hospital, you would expect the hospital to, to collaborate. So, but it's not a must. So, uh, I'm going to talk about the project we're doing in Bilbao, but just interrupt me, and if you want to come back to anything of the platform, if something comes up, you just ask. So I'm going to give a very small introduction to Bilbao Maria, maybe can collaborate. <laughs> uh, a very small introduction with a very uh, specific focus related to the project. But uh, I think it's important to see why, where did this project come from and why did we get in contact with these people. Um, so uh, I have to talk about Bilbao and its industrial heritage because even if people think that Bilbao is a city of the Guggenheim, that is very new. So uh, until these that you see here, I'm sorry for the pictures because some of them are not that good. Um, uh, so, well, the history of Bilbao in the modern time, like uh, recently, but before the Guggenheim, is that Bilbao was a super industrial city, an incredibly industrial city, and it made all it w its wealth from industrial, I mean, from the industry. And it was one of the richest city in Spain, probably, I suppose, with Madrid and Barcelona and maybe Valencia. But and uh, there were quite big fortunes related to industry. But it also, the, the landscape of the city was absolutely linked to this industrial uh, image. The the well, my rem I'm not from Bilbao. Uh, I'm, I've been living there for some years now, but I live I lived next to San Sebastian, which is the bourgeois city in the coast. So I was used to this beautiful San Sebastian with the beach, and uh, my parents had good friends in Bilbao, so we would go and we went by bus. And I remember going in Zabalburu, like the entrance, the entrance, and everything being grey, yeah. but this like this color, all the houses from the smoke of the factories. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 main monument was this color from the smoke of the factories, and I remember when I was a child thinking like I will never live in this city, <laughs> and then there I am. I'm very happy about it. But uh, but here you see the industries were uh, in different parts of the city, but some of them Bilbao is uh, there's a river that crosses it, so the city grew around the river. And um, and uh, the river is very important because that's where the transportation for the for the industry was done. I will also show you a very impressive image of the river <laughs> at some point. And these that we s that you s so all along the river actually it was factories. So these that you see here, these there, these are all uh, industrial buildings. This was a big port. This is another view, and this is 
this was the this were also this was like a big train station also where they brought all the minerals from the, because this is another thing I will show you now but just on top of the city there were mines mm, of min of uh, carbon or, uh, chalk chalk and uh, and minerals and uh, hierro uh, like um, burdinha uh, iron <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like iron and they were all transported to uh, the riverside and in the riverside they were charged or taken to uh, the sea which is like s eight kilometers far away something like that and then taken to other countries or other places in in, in the peninsula uh, so this is what you see there like the train station for the min not for people but for the transport of, of, of minerals and so on and this uh, this here this is a uh, another big uh, factory this is where the Guggenheim is now this is the this is Havana Ibarra so this is like this today yeah? <laughs> This is the transformation, this sums up the transformation of Bilbao in the last 40 years. So what happened in Bilbao was that it was very, very industrial, but in the 80s, like in a lot of places in Europe, there was an enormous industrial crisis and a lot of the factories moved or changed or closed. And the whole city, it, uh, it was a very rough time because a lot of people lost their jobs and there were very big st street protests and uh, and the, th the city started to think on how to keep on going because it was really a ruin, like it, it was a very bad moment. And they had this idea of bringing the Guggenheim, I don't know exactly, it's like a long process, but it something somehow happened that the Guggenheim ended up there. And it has like changed the city completely. Uh, for some good things, for a lot of bad things. <laughs> but I'm not going to get so much into that, but what I really want to say is that the origin of Bilbao and where Bilbao comes from and what it was is that it was an industrial city and that uh, uh, it wasn't an industrial city such a long time ago. A lot of people that we know, like m my dad wasn't working in Bilbao, but he was working in a company in Guipuzcoa, in the region I come from, that which is headquarters were here, so people who are 50 years old now were working in these factories like 20 years ago. So it, it's very recent change, it's not like a century ago. And um, uh, the problem that has happened in Bilbao uh, is that with this idea of this idea of the Bilbao effect that has been successful and the city has renovated, uh, well, this is my opinion, but Maria can also say what she thinks, of course. Uh, <laughs> but I I have the impression that in the last years, espe especially, the city has is going through a completely homogenizing process where there is this Im image of the modern city that has to be everything like with big name architects, Calatrava, Sahadi, the Moneo, even if the work they do is shit, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a good project of them, it just has to be signed by them. It's just a name. So, it, and it's this idea that it's more homogenizing more and more, and it's it's giving like more, uh, uh, it, everything has to be shiny, modern, and it's it's really taking away anything that has to be with other kind of image of the city. That is isn't for sure. Also, I mean, uh, I was in Barcelona, I was invited to, to talk about Bilbao and the Bilbao effect. I was like, uh, I mean, it was the, the people from the city hall that they were there to define the idea, and I was like the other, <laughs> the other person somehow. Obviously, I was in their presentation, they were not in mine. Uh, what a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> a surprise. And, and it was incredible because they were using the metaphor, I think we have talked about that many times, but they were using the metaphor of the, of the, um, hardware and software, and they were saying that they have done the, the hardware, they have all these buildings, and now that is the moment for the software. And it's like, how is it possible that you are, you have all the city with many hardware without knowing <coughs> for what you want to have these buildings? And they have invested a lot of money in many buildings, may, more than in, in, the, in the content, and also they they are really proud of saying, in this case, this, this guy that says from the city hall, he, he was saying that uh, when, they dis when they were in the middle of the crisis, they, they, decide, they decided to use culture um, yeah. to, to, to save them. Yeah. The, but but they, they, don't, they don't have a really interest in, in the culture no, no, no. in the contents. And that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they are not even going to the 
no, 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 not at all. And the worst thing, or the, not worse, but it's very clear that they say it openly. I mean, it's not, they don't even try to hide it. It's like when we went, <laughs> for them it's a very natural thing that you use culture to promote other things and you use that architecture, even if it doesn't mean anything, doesn't say anything. So that is what is really worrying that they don't have, at least if they were ashamed of saying it, you would say like, well, they know it's not, no, but they think it's the way of doing things. So that's the, the dangerous thing of Bilbao. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and sometimes it's funny because you can say things criticizing them, and they don't get that you are criticizing no, them. No, no, the thing, you, the thing you are, you're believing it, and it's like you don't get the irony of my speech, and that it worries me very much. Uh, so, so. So well, the the thing is that, and I brought a couple of examples. This is seen from the other side. So this is the other way around. This is where the the ships were built. This was one of the biggest ship uh, shipbuilding companies in in the state. It has disappeared now. Uh, this is the old football stadium. They are building a new one next. To a horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible thing next to. It. And um, and this is the image of the of the river. This is the old town of Bilbao, and you say that. You see the yellow river? It's not an effect. It's a yellow river. That was the color of the water at some points when the factories on the top of the river just let everything go. And it w this was a common, I wouldn't say like everyday thing, but this happened in the, I think this photo is from the 80s. I mean, it's not from 1950. It's like 30 years ago. So it was a highly contaminated river. There were absolutely no f no no living <laughs> beings in it. Or if they were, they had three eyes. And uh, it was, yeah, it, it was like really, really impressive. Um, and there are some, a few pictures like this, like, wow, really scary. And this, this is the open air mine. Uh, mine? Mine? Uh, uh? Quarry? Okay, so this is the quarry. And uh, so, just for you to see where it is, this is the old town. Mm? <laughs> this is where Consoni is now. <laughs> this is where I live. <laughs> so, I mean, it's the center of the city. It's like, it's the center, the center of the city. Uh, this is the old town, this is the train station. Uh, so it's really, this is Mirivilla. And this, this, was, this was a mine, of, uh, like a quarry, an open air mine for iron, and they go from here, they could ship the the mineral down and and here in this in this dock they would put it into water and 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 send it to the well to to other to the other place where we've seen with the trains and so on so you see how the whole city was in the middle of this industrial thing it's not that the industries were like hundred kilometers away and uh, and this is the biggest industry in the ten next to next to Bilbao because Bilbao is long and it's got like two or three uh, cit big cities next to it that were also built very much around industry and this has disappeared nowadays but you see this is Baracaldo it's called so the town is here you can see the houses here but look at this eh? this was these were uh, mineral uh, mineral factories uh, Alto Sorno I don't know how to go, like uh, to produce, to take out the mineral and produce like the raw iron. And you see this is also like an open quarry, these are like everything was, and you would go down the ribbon and everything was like this. And I'm talking this, the last building of this was destroyed last year. So <laughs> it's not it's not so long ago. But what happened with Bilbao is that although it, everything comes from the industry, for good or for bad, that's the history of the city, there is a absolutely no interest in maintaining any kind of memory relating to that. It's like erasing that we were poor, erasing that the city was dirty, you know, like not remembering all that. So for example, uh, the other day I brought, I, I put the video of Kukuza, like uh, I was talking about the commons and the public and the Kukuza like as an, an example of common use of a building and Kukuza, I told you it was a, well, I think I have the image. This one, it was destroyed, yeah. It was really terrible. Uh, this one, the one that was destroyed, is Kukuza. It's written here. It's Q-U-Q-U-T-Z-A. This doesn't exist anymore. But you see also the building. It's not that it's got a lot of historic, it's not like the brightest industrial building in the world, but they were interesting buildings that could be used for many things. You saw in the video how they were using it for restaurants, for classes, for the, 
there are a lot of things you can do in these buildings that are really very useful and quite easy to maintain. And this is another one, the one I was showing before, this one, not this one, oh wait. Yeah, this one, I hope it's not going to move again. This one was a garage, an old uh, oil station from the 40s. This actually was uh, classified as a, uh, as a valuable rationalist building from the, from the I, th I think it's from the beginning of the 40s. And uh, this was terrible. I really loved this building. I wanted to have a loft in it. Now it's not going to happen <laughs> anymore. No, but uh, it's in front of this other building, which is also a historic building that was refurbished by, rebuilt by Philip Stark. And which is actually kind of cultural center. I mean, we could talk very long about it, but let's say it's a cultural center. They have a cinema room, they have a media tech and so on. They have restored it. And this building was just in front. So it was actually in a very good place located, for example, for doing artist studios, for example, for doing exhibition spaces or, or a cultural center that could combine with the one they had because it was a very good central location. Well, in, in Spain, the 6th and the 8th of December are holiday days, so people very often go, like, if the 6th is a Wednesday, they go from sun Wednesday to Sunday. This was the case, we lived on a Wednesday, I came back on Sunday, it had disappeared. But the great thing is that the people from the Association of Industrial uh, Patrimony, that I will talk about now a little, they didn't know that it was going to be destroyed. It was classified. But when they came, it was already destroyed. So, and this was the, this has been... It's a constitution day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very constitutional. Day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this is like the, the, just to see what is the, like the, <laughs> the movement in Bilbao right now. And uh, this was also destroyed. And well, this is the, per so, uh, taking into account this industrial heritage that is getting lost very, very quickly, not only the buildings, on the one hand the buildings, but also all the culture that went around it. Like, for example, uh, we were talking, one of the person in our group, uh, on the patrons group, uh, was working in one of these big factories and he was telling us how the, they moved a lot in the river. There were a lot of little boats that could take the workers from one side to the other, so the river was very, very alive. And now, because there's no industry, all that has gotten quite lost. So it's also the like the social living or just the m how people lived at the time with their bad things, good things and whatever, but how it was like not so long ago. So we decided, we were talking with different groups of people and finally for the program for new patrons, we got in contact with a mixed group of people who had been working around a small museum in the area, who had been collaborating with that small museum for uh, industrial heritage. So they had been, there was this man who's from the, uh, regional Association of Industrial Heritage, who ha used to be a worker in one of these factories and has been like working with that industrial group for a long time. Then there, wa there was the girl from the museum, who was actually the person I did the contact through because I, I, she's a friend of mine, so that's how I got in contact with everyone else. And she is an art historian, and she works in that in 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 this place where I showed the, like the big in Baracaldo, where the big factories are in a history in this small history museum, like history center. So she she. She's also very interested in industrial buildings and the industrial past because Baracal, the place where she works, it all came by the industry. It has almost no no further past than that. And then there were two architects who had been working in this place where that I'm going to show now and who are working with uh, uh, cultural heritage related to industry, industrial heritage and post-industrial landscapes. And another young architect who's also very interested, had also been working here and is also very interested in, in this kind of subjects. Uh, that was the group we started with. And then we had, so we met with them, asked them if they wanted to do something. They said yes, and we started. And we started from the idea of so the, the, the main idea they were interested in was, the common thing, let's say, was uh, industrial heritage, but it could be whatever. Like it could be something super specific in one place or it could be something super big and very s about memory in, you know, it could be whatever. So we started trying to point down ideas, blah, 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 and we started to walk around. And these two guys who were working here, they proposed to do something in a very specific place. And we weren't sure about that place because of health and safety issues. Uh, also, it was a very limited place in terms of what you could do. It was also defined very much. So, w But we were walking to see that place and we went to this place I'm going to show you now, to this area. 
And then finally, we started looking at all the places that were in this area, and we said, well, let's think about this area because it might be very interesting. So the area we are working with is called Zorrozaurre, Ribera de Deusto. <coughs> it's this peninsula. And this is just for you to see where it is located. So this here is the Guggenheim. This is all the area that I show you with the big tower. There was no big tower here yet because it's quite new. That's the one that's got the copyright views on the yeah. city. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is where the Guggenheim is. This is like the, the first, uh, this is the center of the city. It's like the first, uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, of the city from the beginning of the 20th, end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th. And just in the other side is the old town, but this is like the main center now. And this is the Guggenheim. So you see this peninsula is really li large. It's really big. And it's... Yeah, Consoni started there. I think I have an image. I, I, let's see if I have one. I think I have one of Consa of the original one. Ah, I passed without seeing. So, well, here you see this is the Guggenheim. This is where the tower is now here. This is the concert hall that was at the back. And this is where the peninsula is. So, you see it's really long and it's really close to the center of the city. And uh, the interesting thing about that peninsula, well, this is the view. Uh, Pay attention to this part because this is actually going to become an island. So they are starting to do a hole there to open it. Actually, this wasn't originally a peninsula. It was part of the continent and the river went this way. But they started to do this canal here because they wanted to open it up so it could be easier for the transportation of minerals. So one way could be from, but they never finished because they didn't have enough money. So uh, they it, it ended up like this. And this is this peninsula. What is interesting about it is that I would say all the industrial buildings that are left in Bilbao are there. Uh, I, maybe there's one or two in other places, but like the main industrial place was there. So it was very interesting this place for the people in the patrons group because it was one of the few pl places where you still had something that was left and still hasn't trans uh, changed, but it's going to change very soon. And also because it was a place that was interesting because it has been, it, not so many people live there anymore, but people who work there also live there. So it was a mixed place of factories and living place. And uh, well, it's and now it's been used in different ways. Uh, well, I will show you now. So the thing is that that place is going to disappear because Mrs. Saha Hadid has a super plan for it. Uh, the the like the 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 official like the the mayor of Bilbao who's let's leave it here um, had this plan in this super renovation of Bilbao that someone had to be done in that place and it's true that someone has to be done in that place in many senses uh, I don't mean like billionaire but it, it needs a solution because it has been paralyzed for 30 years and the people living there they are very desperate with the situation but uh, but well the great idea of the of the of the major office was to to tell Saha Hadid to do a master plan, which of course you can imagine what kind of master plan Saha Hadid has done. So the first point is that it's going to become an island because everyone wants a Manhattan. And uh, that's the only reason. Yeah. They say it's because of because it gets uh, the water goes high and so on, but actually it's because they want a Manhattan <laughs> <laughs> in Bilbao. Uh, super good idea. And so this is what Saha Hadid proposed. So imagine, and now I'm, I'm going to like go to the present. We're in a super crisis in Spain. It's not a super crisis. We're never going to go out from it. I mean, not tomorrow or in the next day. And one of the reasons was the real estate uh, inversion and inversion and speculation. This whole project. So the first step is to open the canal and make it an island just for nothing, which means that they have to <laughs> do a bridge. Tell me if it's sustainable in a time of crisis to have a peninsula, making an island and build a bridge to start with. It's like super logical thing to do. And then uh, next to it, of course, there's going to be a lot of construction. And this area here is going to be luxury flats. Of course, at the beginning of, of the project, it was in the times of super wealth in, in, in Spain. Um, they thought that through selling that, they were going to promote all of the building. But the funny thing is that now everyone knows that they are never going to sell these buildings, even if they do them. Because wh first of all, who wants to go live there when it's going to be semi-deserted? Second, who's going to have the money to go live there and pay for, for a place like that? So it's absolutely unsustainable, but the project goes on. So 
we don't know when it's going to happen, what it's going to be, but the project hasn't been cancelled. So this is the future for the for the place. And one of the things that they that they were asking for was well that they got was that they made a list of the valuable historical buildings that they had to maintain but it took years for them to say like okay we're keeping this and this and this because it, it was going to be like everything out and everything new so well this is the super master plan again and this is how the place is now so the place is now a mix of houses you see houses in the riverside mostly and then in the back it's mostly industries and you have mixed industries there are still a couple of industries which are there this big one here this is a chain is the biggest chain industry in the world. I think that's so funny. The, uh, so they do these big chains, like these big chains for, for boats. Uh, do you see them here, these mountains of chains? And, and they are going to move out, but they are still there and they are still working. And here you have like smaller places, like for example, the Circus von Kukuza is now in one of these, but then some of them are like garage and uh, different kinds of small industries. Here you have a church, I don't know if you see it, because this is the neighborhood where people live and still live. There are 300 inhabitants here right now in this area. Uh, so this is Artiat, which is what it was maybe I don't know. I don't know if Artiat is known here. It's a cookie company, and uh, this it was very very famous in Spain. And this one, for example, is one of the buildings that they are going to maintain because it's a neo neoclassical building from the 40s. It's very strange building for a factory. Um, but you see how it's the mix. Like it's like one house, one house in very bad state, then a full, uh, a closed industry. Then the building behind is an industry that is still working by parts. Then in the front you have like a small garden, but it's it's blocked. You cannot see it. You cannot enter it. So this is more or less how it looks like. Uh, and you, the buildings. Ah, uh, they are polluted. Most of them. I mean, the, a lot of the places are polluted. That is another problem. They have to clean them. The ground. A lot of grounds are contaminated, and they have to clean them. Yeah, yeah. And also, a problem that they have is that the water goes up, and sometimes it gets. Ah, uh, today, uh, yeah, today there is. Uh, yeah. It's going to <laughs> ah of the buildings. Yeah. There are different yeah. ones. Yeah. Amianto, amianto. Yeah. 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 Uh, here, some buildings <coughs> are done with amianto. Some others aren't. Apparently, the oldest ones not. The newest ones, some of them are. Yeah. Uh, so that's also a problem. And for example, this building here, the one you see here. This they have gotten to maintain, this is Papelera. But this is a very good example of what Maria was saying. They have rescued the building, but they don't have money even to open it because they don't have money to pay even one person to be in charge. So now it has been restored. It was a lot of money. They don't know what to use it for. It was like general hall for, mm, and now they, don't, they cannot even open it for that because they don't even have one person they can pay to go open it. So it's these politis, politics of, okay, let's keep this. Why? We don't know. What are we going to use? About? We don't know. Hmm? So that's, that's how it normally works. So, well, the idea, and well, just to know, in this place, what has happened is that in some of these buildings, some artistic, uh, well, <laughs> people related to culture have gotten established. There are different things. Uh, there is a theater dance company, Aceria, which is there from quite the beginning and is using the, it's from the beginning of this process. I mean, like, yeah, 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 like 15 years, 17 years there. And they, they are using these buildings, for example, for theater. And this is one, one of the, of the stages they have. And then there is another one, which is this one, which is called Zorrozaurre Art Work in Progress. Oh, was, uh, so set a WP, and uh, they have they recuperated some of these spaces, and they are doing a co-working space. But well, it's quite a controversial <laughs> place. 
but they have quite big spaces and there are people who are working there. And for example, the architects that were collaborating with us in the, this first part, they ha they were in one of these spaces. At, at the end, they left because they got in very bad relationship with the people who are doing it. So it's a it's a bit of a tricky place, but they're, it, they are trying also to label it a bit through this artist, art cultural. On the one hand, it's not bad, but on the other one, it's also a labeling thing of cultural, like the cult peninsula of, of, of design and culture now so it's it's there are things like this uh, and then there are things like there are some uh, industries that have been squatted by immigrants with no papers who are living there because it's a easy place to live so you have very very different things and then there have been quite a lot of artistic projects uh, but I was telling yesterday for example that well I'm going to say it now but these are the neighbors doing a project with I don't what's the name I never forget I never remember the do you know the name of the guy I don't remember it ever the one who did the project with the signs what's his name yeah. I don't remember well it's okay well but it's a it's an artist <coughs> I uh, is he an artist I think he's yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. he's in culture but it's, yeah, it's no no he's like a satellite. <laughs> And he did this project with the neighbors, but I've heard also like very different ideas or, or interpretations of it where uh, he this, uh, they kind of did these signs where they said what these spaces could be if it was urbanized in another way. So for example, this was the pizzeria, I mean, and, and they decided where, and uh, this was the alternative bar for old people. So you go walk in and you see these signs, which, it's on the one hand, it's good because it gives you the idea like, well, this could happen. But on the other hand, it's so unreal because then there's no one real. Like it's so deserted and you see like good art, really an alternative bar for uh, for all people work here. It's like, how did they come to this? Like, I think it's great, but uh, I don't know. It's So there have been quite a lot of projects. And then there's a lot of graffiti, for example. I brought this as an example. Like it's a place where people can, like in Bilbao, there's not a lot of graffiti because the city is super controlled. But you go here and it's like the graffiti park because it, of course, is where people can go and do whatever because it's abandoned almost. So it's, it's very much used in the in in many senses in that way. There used to be like uh, parties in the pavilions also, <laughs> like uh, clandestine parties in some of the pavilions. Officially, it's going to happen. Okay. Officially, they are starting to disintoxicate the f the the ground in 2014 at the end and constructing in 2015. This is the official. I got it not long ago. <laughs> Reality, pff, I'm not sure that's going to happen in 2015. I'm not sure at all because the the municipality doesn't have any money at all, and they are asking for money now to open the canal. That for sure is going to happen. I don't know. I d they are not at all. Cl we are also in a strange situation that gets on my nerves a little bit. That this is very cruel to say it like that, but the mayor of the city is dying. He's very, very ill. He's got a cancer. I mean, I don't know if he's dying tomorrow or he's dying in two years, but he's been, he's really not doing well, but he doesn't resign because he's been the mayor of the city for how long? 20 years, I think. Uh, and he's got this sensation that he's like the, the king. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has been elected every four years for 20 years, all the time for 20 years. Or totally in love with him. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really charismatic guy. That yeah. People from the, the the nationalist party they really love this guy. I mean, but he's really, really yeah, so charismatic. And he's very he charismatic. Says things in that way because the, the 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 way of being from the law is like everybody I'm from the law. Yeah. You know? yeah. So someone that is from really. the law could do anything. <laughs> I mean, everything is possible. So this idea, I mean. It's not only that they want to, 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 to build the Sahagani, they want to do a second Guggenheim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. this is only yeah. happening in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really, they really, really it's... One, they are going to do a second one. Yeah, yeah. So, this is really Bilbao style. It's Bilbao style. It's, yeah. And it's well known in whole Spain like that. It's like the Bilbao... Like being super arrogant. Um, do you want one? I'll make two. You know, it's yeah. that, that kind of... 
attitude. And he's super charismatic. I, w went, w I went once to the city hall for a prize that they were given. It was incredible. There was all, all these old ladies, like sisters, like super coming from the hairdresser, super elegant, had nothing to do with the people getting the prize. The people getting the prize were with the prize like this, like, who is all these people around me? <laughs> and when the mayor came in, they were like, ah! <laughs> it was like, what's going on here with these people? He's like super charismatic guy. Yeah, but he's also very, now I think he really hasn't, you know, he, after 20 years being re-elected, I think, of course, he thinks that he's got everything to say and, you know, that his word is the truth. His salary is the, is the biggest one in all Spain. He's, oh, really? He's having, uh, because there is, there is a legislation, uh, I don't know how it's here, but in Spain, you, you, you <coughs> can recognize all the, the, the public, uh, Salaries of uh, ministries, but not to the uh, to the mayors of the of the cities. He's the only one that the, the mayor can decide their own salary. Oh, wow. So this guy has the, the biggest one. He's uh, he has even more <coughs> than the, the president of Spain. Oh shit! I didn't know that. That's yeah, sorry. Really? Yeah, because equal and more than the prime minister, but they're like yes. <laughs> oh my god. Because, yeah, it was like a huge uproar when people found out. And, like, so that's how all the public money is going. Like, so putting it into their own wages. Um, <laughs> we don't have that like, rubbish connection in like five weeks. It's like, you know, I mean, it was a huge uproar when they found out. But I think it's a similar thing where they, um, but I think now they're sort of trying to install something where it's equal to all boroughs as opposed to yeah. each one decides how much they get. Oh. But, and then the, the top of this story is that this man, last year, he got the prize to the best major in the world. So if he wasn't arrogant enough, now he's the best major in the world. Yeah. So now it's like, uh, but the, the, the bad thing is that the man's very ill. And the normal thing for a representative is if you are very ill, you resign and you take care of yourself and someone else takes care of the city. But he doesn't resign. So he's literally in sick leave, like every time he comes, it's like, Everyone's saying like, oh my God, he looks like a zombie. He really looks like... <laughs> but n the, the, the city hall is paralyzed since a year because they can't take any decisions because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if in next month they will be having elections or they will be naming someone else. So it's like a complete... St it's a crazy situation for us. It, it's like really... So that plus the um, crisis plus everything, well, that's how we are right now. Um, the is that everything is going on. Yeah, everything's going on. We don't know exactly, but the, the answer is that yes. So how the super plan is going on. Yeah, actually, I saw in a blog the other day a friend sent it to me that uh, it was a post on the BBK tower of the tower of the bank, and it said in the post, "This is already in construction in Zorrozaure in this place," and I was like, "Well, I've been there two weeks ago, and nothing's in construction." And uh, there are even blogs like saying like this is already going on and nothing is being constructed there and I'm like this is really strange. <laughs> so it's it, but officially everything is going to happen tomorrow. So we'll see. So well the idea we came to was let's work in this landscape with this with a group of people. So the, this is our route or our, our like our basic idea we had to give to the artist. So the idea they wanted to do was to show the value of the existing landscape and existing, they, un they said, we understand that as a continuous evolving state in a historical process. So not a fixed thing, but something that is changing all the time. So showing the value of the existing landscape and social scape in this area, in all levels, as a basic tool for understanding the city. So the idea of the city of Bilbao doesn't end where the modern buildings end, it continues, and this is also the city. Cities have spaces like this, buildings like this, and situations like this. Let's accept that as part of the city, and let's see what we can learn from it as a city. And uh, we should look for mechanisms to trigger participation, both from the agents related to the place and from any interested city dweller, so anyone in the city, but people living there too which are easy to maintain over time, that was very important, that it's not that you do something that then it's not going to be sustainable and no one's going to take care of it and it's going to 
right? But that is something that can live by itself or easily. And the third one, I forgot the, the guide, uh, which allow for imaginative uses, interventions, and or activities in that space. So this was what the people in, in the group decided that we had to give to the artist. So departing from this, well, now I'm going to tell like how the process, and then we can talk about the problems because, of course, we had a lot of problems. And I, I'm not looking at the hour because I don't have so. I don't know how. <coughs> Quarter past four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, it's fine. <laughs> yeah? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. If you're fine. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, so with these ideas, with these in mind, I was thinking of an artist, and I decided to invite Andrea Costa who's an artist that I've known for almost four, four <laughs> years now, yeah, four years now, because she was a resident with me at the Palais de Tokyo. So uh, this is also that something that we were discussing the other day, and you were talking about this this morning too, like this idea of the, the human and so on, the, the human relationship. And for example, Andrea is a very good friend of mine. Like I like her work a lot. I think she's a very good artist, but she's also a very good friend of mine, which actually it also, I'm not going to say that I choose her before th because of that, because that could be a complete lie, but it did help me like thinking that it was the first project that we have to do, that we don't have any funding, we have to find everything. I said like, well, I need someone that I can trust and that I know is going to be committed to the project. So I'm not going to take someone that I like the work very much, but I don't know at all, because if it doesn't work out, it's our first project, I don't really want to risk it. So I'm saying this like very honestly also, because I think it's it's, it's good to acknowledge that these things sometimes they they play a role but of course i really like her job and i think she was she is very good for this and actually it's working quite well in that sense so andrea's work she is this is a very old work that she did i don't have many images from her work but she has like two different uh well very related but uh, on the one hand she does interventions in public space this is quite old as i said this is quite easy and not very uh, but she did very interesting interventions in some abandoned buildings in, in East Germany because she was living in Weimar. She did a master's in the Bauhaus there in public ar art in the public space. Very interesting master's, by the way. And um, and she was in Weimar, so she was, for example, working with an abandoned building in Jena and well, doing things with uh, abandoned uh, 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 industrial spaces. And also with public situations and this, for example, uh, she works quite a lot with uh, the presence of nature in the city. So uh, trying like to find how nature occupies the city and what the role of that nature could be. And this is also an old work of hers because I, I'm sorry I don't have like the newer ones, but where she was looking for all the little plants that were appearing and putting like the, the, the signs of the prices that you find in the shops, like to say like, hey, you have it here, <laughs> don't go. Like also quite innocent, but very nice. And uh, and well, anyways, and uh, another thing that Andrea does that is very interesting is that she has been for quite a few years now documenting um, um, architectures in place, like different uses of public space and of architecture that uh, uh, that appear um, what's the like uh, spontaneously. So, for example, she's from Colombia originally, and uh, she goes to Colombia quite a lot, although she's now living in Germany. And she has been documenting a lot how people uh, use the public space in, in Colombia, how they, for example, build houses, how they uh, enlarge their houses like illegally to make them more habitable, and how like these kind of strategies of places with not many resources to use the space in another way. So she and she has like thought quite a lot about that and done some publications so i thought it was someone very interesting to come to this space and look it through this experience that she had from both east germany and colombia and um, and to try to find ideas for those spaces and try to see what these spaces could be and put them also in relationship with things that are happening ways of using spaces in other parts of the world which i, I think was which have similar characteristics although they are in very different places so what she proposed she came first for a week in october last year and she she was doing like a first research and seeing the space meeting with people and then she presented a pre-project and the 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 patrons liked it so she she went on working and uh, she came in July and she stayed the whole month for research. Uh, and in the meantime, we had like more Skype meetings with the, with the um, 
with the patrons and with her. And um, and what she proposed and what she's doing, although it might change because the we didn't get the original funding, and in the meantime there have been also other things that we have discovered, which I will also like tell you know. But the first idea was that she was going to do a a, a publication that was going to have seven parts. Uh, now it's still going to be a publication, but we don't know if it's going to be seven parts divided like that, but well, the ideas that were going to appear in the, this is drawings that she does. She works very much through photograph and drawing. So this is also, imagine the kind of aesthetic that it could have. Um, so this, first there's going to be a plan of the peninsula and she wants to like find what kind of spaces there are and what kind of uh, like what kind of use is being done of them and do it by color so in a very easy way you can have an idea so well this is industrial places this is abandoned places this is occupied places this is people living this so that you can have an, an impression of the place uh, also for example where there are gardens because she's very interested on where th where there are like hidden gardens in these areas then she has documented like small interventions that people have already done in those areas, like to use them in different ways. Like for example, this is one, and uh, it's one of the docks next to the river. There are quite a lot of them, and they digested like a little park and this mm, little table and place to sit. And when the weather's good in summer, especially people sit there. So she's been documenting some small interventions, this is the biggest one, like most of them are really small, like for example, small bridges to cross from one building to the other, and uh, like things very easily done. She's been documenting them, and then she's been uh, like looking at what kind of uh, materials have been used and how they have been used, uh, done. So l with the idea of, well, I will link with that. And then this summer when she was there, she was working with a guy who's a, botanical freak, like he's not a bot botan botanist, I don't know, botan bo uh, botanist, you say? He's not a botanist, but he he's one of these freaks of, na he really likes nature and he knows the name of all plants and and he's super, uh, he knows all the like local varieties. So they were walking together around the place and finding what different of nature is going to, like what different kind of plants, which ones are plaques, which ones can be used for, I don't know, eating or teas or whatever. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of fruit trees, for example, <laughs> from the old houses that were there, and there are fruit trees standing. Uh, so what kind of like vegetation and how it is used or how it appears, because for example, there are some buildings that have vegetation also in the roof, so how that is used for isolation, that's why they didn't take it out. So they've been like documenting what kind of biological life is there, and also animals but not so much but she was saying that it's, it's she was saying well animals is more reduced there are rats there are <laughs> so I said, yeah that's about what there is um but there's a lot of plants so she's been looking at that and how they grow in different places um and then the another important part well there's going to be i didn't put any images but of course there's going to be a part where there's information about the buildings a little bit more historical information and experiential uh, information of these places this uh, information we are getting part of it from the association of uh, patrimony because we have this patron who's part of the of the association so they have given us a lot of information about the like the built things that there are so she is going to include that too and then she is going to propose and this is related to the things that are already done she is going to propose possible interventions for the space uh this is one but this for example is more clear so there are these i don't know exactly what these were used for but they have standard they are like sticks in front of a of a of a working space and she is proposing how to use them like with with very small resources like how to make a, a bench out of them so there's place to sit for people working there when they go out to eat the Mike Taco which is what they eat at 11 and um, so she's looking at places like this and small interventions that could be done easily and without probably without permission like things you could do like on your own or just with a couple of people and the idea is that the publication is going to have like different function. <coughs> the first function would be to document the place and to document how it is now and to acknowledge that that's part of the city and it's like how it is also and that cities go through these processes where some places get abandoned and reused by other things. 
The second one is to give ideas of things that could be done and these ideas will be all in a web page also and will be available for people to use them, but not only in this space, but also in other spaces, <coughs> in other places that have similar characteristics. So that's the idea of the instructions. So that's why the other one also was explained like what materials could you use and so on. And the idea is that this part could be, yeah, that it's in the web page and that we try to move it a little bit so that if you have a post-industrial area in Bari and you have a garden where you can build something with palais, then maybe you have some in instructions there of how to do, do it if you want. And then the third part that we wanted to do and we hope we still do will be like a workshop with uh, people from the School of Fine Arts or maybe with another school. Uh, where we also look at the place and try to see it like part of the city and uh, try to see if there's any kind of intervention that it's interesting to make. But in principle, we're not doing any intervention right away. And I will explain now why. But it's more like the publication with the intervention. <coughs> and then one part that I don't know if she's still doing, but I hope she is because I really liked it very much and some people in the patrons group too, was that she was going to do an adventure book for children. And I hope she's going to do because I think good adventure book for ad adventure, un libro de aventuras para niños, yeah, for children, relating to, relating to that area, so that you could discover that area like as a <laughs> child. Yeah, I think that's great. I hope she's going to do it because she has never done anything for children, so she had the idea, but she was a bit like, uh, that's. That's really nice. I hope she's going to do it because I really like it. So she was a bit unsure because she's never done anything for children. So she was like, yeah, I want to do it, but let's see if I do. But I hope she's going to do it because I think that could be great. So, uh, yeah. Basically, they, all of them, they are researchers, but they created this pr parallel project called the UGM. Mm. And basically, they, they do something very, very similar. Maybe you might be interested in yeah. having a look at uh, them. They basically discover um, like right. abandoned uh, areas yeah. uh, through by looking at uh, insects, uh, small insects, uh, and uh, like bringing people, groups of, of people and uh, young children to, to discover this sort of microcosm. Mm, ah, Uge, is it U-J-E-A? I e -E -E will write it down there because I don't have anything to write. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I will have a look. There, there are, I mean, there are quite a lot of projects that use this idea of common knowledge or common ways of using the space and then give it to it's it's not super original in the but we think it's interesting because the place is interesting but I'm gonna tell you also the problems that we had because I mean and, and the discussions because now when I present it everything looks really well and really easy and like it was like that from the beginning but actually there were th we had like and I think it's interesting to know also because I think some of the ideas also relate to the way in which you work in in public but maybe you want to do a little stop and then I Okay, so, well, this is the project, <laughs> uh, but we also had some, I mean, not more than problems, some of them were problems, but mostly we had like different things that happened through the process, like now what I said, it's the process seen from today and cleaning it up of all the like ups and downs, like it's the f result that we have right now. Well, the result that we have right now, also I didn't say, is that we get we got some funding for the pre-project to pay Andrea to come and to 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 do the first project. Uh, we have funding from the f we had funding from the Fondation de France for Andrea's fees, so she her work is paid and her stay in Bilbao was paid. Uh, we have uh, funding for the work of the designer who is going to work in the publication with her, but we still need funding for producing the book, and we still need funding for the web page. And the web page has become more important in the last months because from the beginning we thought of doing a web page, but what has happened is that presenting the project in a couple of places, we have seen that actually the project seems to be quite interesting in places that are not Bilbao. So from the beginning we thought of giving importance to the web page, but now we think like, well, really it's nice to have a good web page with all the information which is also in English because it seems like it really could be useful in other places or at least of interest. So it, if it can be used in other places, it's also part of the project and it's really interesting that it should, I mean, that it could be used. 
And then another reason too is because, as I as we were saying before, when I said I have this like the official parties that they are starting in 2014 is because we m met with the man who's the director of the whole project of this area, and uh, he and we presented him the project so that well just to him he knew that this was going on. And he told us that a lot of the spaces are going to be are going to start to be cleaned in the like in 2014, end of 2014. So some of these spaces are not going to exist maybe for more than one year and a half, ma two years maximum. So in that sense, it became as I mean, it can be. We also know that this is what they said. It can be that they are there for ten years. We still don't know, but officially they might disappear soon. So we talking with Andrea about this. She said, "Well, we all discussed, and the patrons also were so that well, it's more interesting that it has also a documental thing, like you know, that of preserving what there is there now, like a, a state of the situation right now. Because if it's going to disappear, it's nice for people to know how it was for a lot of years and how these spaces were and how it was used. So that part takes more importance also. So it's important to have a good web page <laughs> where that is going to stay." apart from the book, which because the book, we thought about it more as a tool. We always talked of a tool so that, for example, we could do workshops with children or we could the people could use it. Our idea was to do a workshop with teachers from different schools so that then they could use it open like as they wanted to do things with children there, to use it as a tool to do something with the students of fine arts. But it could be an open thing that it could be on the web and people could just use it as a tool for intervening the space or for looking at the space in another way. Um, so we hope we will be able to make the publication. We think we are going to get the money at some point from somewhere else, if not from there. But by now, Andrea is working on the on the publication. The PDF is going to be made, and we are going to have a. We actually already have a a, um, a blog, but I didn't tell you because first of all, it's in Spanish and Basque. So most of you are not going to understand, and then we don't have a lot of information because also, uh, like I. I was managing it partly and it's like very often you don't have so much information that is interesting at the point where you are. So, I mean, there are things and there are a couple of pictures, but it's really not, not, a, not a great information. But we will probably do the web page, even if it's a WordPress, a simple thing, where you can download the book. So that's where we are in terms of producing the project. But then the project also had like ups and downs. And uh, one of the things that has been problematic or has caused discussion also among the patrons and among ourselves and with people in Bilbao was the fact of participation. Because if you remember what I said, actually in the group there's no one who lives in this area. Everyone has it's people living in Bilbao or living in the in the like in the area of Bilbao and close to this place, but no one really lives there. No one works there now because the two groups of architects who were working there, one left before we started with the project, just before, and the other one left in the middle of the project because they didn't get along with these people from co-working. So actually no one is living there or has a, let's call it, direct relationship to the people there. So when we decided we were going to work there, uh, these guys who were in the group at the beginning and then for different reasons left, uh, they said that it was very important for them that it was a participatory thing where the 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 neighbors took part and so we said of course if the neighbors want to take part it's great we invited to well we invited to, we didn't know very well how to get in touch with them that was the first thing like we could go to the street and stop them but it wasn't it was a very natural thing to do. So these guys, they had relation with uh, two or three people from the neighborhood, and one of them was the head of the neighbor association um, because they were doing something, they knew each other. So we, we asked them if they could invite them to come to a, to a meeting. So they came one day to a meeting, and we talked them about the project, and we showed them, and they said, that's really nice, but they never showed up again. So, yeah, I'm telling about the thing with the neighbors, like in case you want to <laughs> say something. I was saying that we don't have any neighbors in the group because when we started, we start we didn't start from that place. We ended up in that place by chance. So there's no one living there who is in the group of patrons, actually. And I was saying that we invited them to come, that it was at the beginning already was difficult to establish contact with them because you cannot stop people in the street and say, hey, do you live here? Do you want to... Uh, 
Yeah, that's it. So we got in contact with the with the guys who were there. They got in contact with us. Well, they knew the people in the association, so we invited people to come, and two people came. One was the president of the association, and the other one was another guy who was in the association. And they came to the meeting. We explained the project. They said it was okay. They liked it. They, they said it was like, yeah, it can be interesting. But first of all, they were they were a bit suspicious because there have been so many projects and also there have been a, a lot of videos who have been and had recorded them there and they always had the impression they feel very looked at and they feel like they are laboratory rats and everyone's talking about their pl the place where they live and they don't feel comfortable with it. So already it was a very tension meeting because they felt like what the fuck are you doing in my neighborhood? And in one heart, like, what are you doing here? And what do you want from us? So it was already, it was a bit difficult, but we got along more or less well. But the thing is that they said it was okay. I mean, they, they thought it was interesting. They said it could, be, it could be good. Then Andrea came, met with them, with the director of the association, and he was actually telling her about his, his experience in the place and his life. He's lived there all his life and one, like, you know, telling stories about how the place was, right? And it was for Andrea, it was very interesting. But then from then on, let's say it's sure, like they don't have any interest in participating in the project. Like they don't have anything against, but they don't really want to like we tried to meet with them a couple of times more and they never had time or they weren't they are not interested so then we had a discussion because it was to which point it's important that them they participate and or they don't and they de they were different points of view and at that point also i must say for the artist it was a very complicated situation because she, when she came the first time she was w meeting the people and she thought that I mean it's it's not that she is crazy about doing participatory projects she, it wasn't like something very important I mean she she didn't want to she said like okay if they are involved I work with them if they are not involved I don't work with them I'm not going to but she said like well at the same time you know I I I, I cannot be chasing people if you want me to part to work with these people you have to people have to come i cannot be like chasing people in this area to have them participate and i was like of course i mean i completely understand that position so there were two people in the group who worked together who were very 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 uh, insistent that the neighbors had to participate and if they didn't the project didn't have any sense and then there were three other people in the group who said that they didn't see it like that that they thought it was a place where we could look at even if no one from the place was living there that we what we couldn't do was pretend that it was a part, uh, something that came from there but that we could say something about the place because it's a place with certain characteristics that uh, interest to the people who are in the patrons group but not pretending that it was a participatory project or that it was you know like uh, coming from the neighbors because it's not so but the other two people said that they thought that if we didn't include the neighbors it was really it was really not right like they felt really uncomfortable with that they said that we were trying uh, taking them as laboratory rats again we said that well that we didn't have to talk about the neighbors either if they didn't want us to talk about like that it's not a but they said that w if we didn't talk about the people living there we weren't really talking about the place you know it was like an unending discussion uh, then also we also had different opinions from people in Bilbao because with Andrea we were meeting different people in Bilbao and for example like uh, Richie for example for Richie it was very problematic that the people in the place were not taking place and it was also very problematic that like he was saying like did you know this project that's happening I don't know when and I was like well I know but you know that I don't like Andrea knows about the project with designs and she knows about the documentary but it's like well there are a lot of pe things that had happened there and uh, and he was saying, for example, well, if you don't know what has happened there, you cannot really add something else, you know, like you cannot do something more. So we had like all these discussions and at some point, yeah. Actually, it happened because we were, yeah, that we were like walking to different places to see different places where we could talk about industry. Zorrozaur is very interesting to a lot of people. Uh, to people in the group because um, the buildings, the industrial buildings that are still there, but not only the buildings, but the post-industrial landscape, like with the places that are abandoned or reused. So it was this idea of not the industrial city, but the post-industrial city. And it was the part of Bilbao that was that maintains that the most. 
And then another thing that was interesting for for quite a few people <laughs> was that was the idea of the city itself, like Bilbao branding itself, like a very modern city, like a super shiny city. And and for example, it was very interesting for some of them how the bridge comes, and uh, I don't have an image of that, but the the bridge in it comes and it makes like a a, a roundabout and it completely cuts Zorro Zorro. So if you don't know that there's a peninsula there, if you come walking, you think that the 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 walk finishes there and there's nothing after. So they were very interested in and also for example the touristic map of Bilbao is cut in Zarazaurre and cut in so how this image of Bilbao is being shaped, so introducing something that is from Bilbao into that image of Bilbao. So that's why we came to Zarazaurre. So of course it was from it's a it's a look that doesn't come from people living there, but it's from people who live in Bilbao and consider that part of Bilbao. So at that point I also think it's legitimate to look at it because why wouldn't you it's like saying you cannot look at a bando because you don't live in a bando. I mean I know it's different but it's like a it's like a discussion that we we still have but uh, like uh, it was a discussion and I know some people not in the group but some people outside from the group they are really not in Zorrozao either. I don't think they are bothered with us doing the project at all. They just don't want to participate. But uh, people in the arts, for example, some people feel uncomfortable about the project. They don't, they don't like it very much. They don't see why we are working in there because it's a very charged space. There have been a lot of things, so it's like um, I don't know. You have a thinking face. <laughs> Yeah, the question of the balance of the, it's true that many participation in, in Sarasaur is complicated because it's true that there have been so many things happen there, uh, documentary of uh, your, I mean, so many, many, many things, documentaries, already works, and also because this is this kind of uh, standby situation from the Sahakari, it's, it's like always, thinking that something is going to happen in Tarazar and then nothing is happening really. Yeah. This, uh, this kind of uh, all the time. At the same time, it's true that, uh, I mean, with La Feria, uh, with their, I don't know, that things happen, but it depends on the project. For instance, I really like this idea of the book. For t I mean, if you, if you use, <coughs> I was thinking, uh, the idea of the participation also, it seems that it has to be always in one way. But finally, I don't know, a, 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 a book for children is a really good example of uh, doing another kind of participation, another kind of fantasy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, this kind of books where you are really uh, playing or you can, uh, or, 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 or with uh, more complex uh, pop-ups or with really easier <coughs> sticks. Uh, I mean, there are so many ways that yeah. you can make a fantasy about this area, that's, that could be something participatory in a really yeah. another way. Yeah. The, for the everything that you were showing, this part is what uh, I liked more, because mm -hmm. it's another way of, of doing a project in, in, a, in a neighborhood but that is not going to bother at all the people that is living there, but at the same time it's, it's a way <coughs> to empower this area, because then it's going to appear, for instance, in a book that appears one place that is going to be there forever, yeah. because in this book it is, and it's also in the imagination of the of the children of the of the more young people. So I think that that could be really, 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 really clever way to yeah. to make a, a project <coughs> that is a public realm, as as the artist <laughs> was answering this morning yeah. with the idea of the book. I mean, no, that's a joke, but it's true that. Uh, that's this way, I think that could be really not problematic, but just, no, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that the. Was <coughs> yeah, no, I completely I appreciate it and quite l agree. But uh, for example, with with this, with the. That was also how I said that we are not going to do any interventions. Uh, in principle, we are not doing any interventions because we thought, okay, when I, we can propose interventions. Then, if no one's asking for the interventions, we are not going to go and do them. You know, like, like that's why also it's more like it's a tool, and it's called like man, uh, use manual is the name of the book. Like, it's it's a, it's a something that you can use, and that, for example, we had a discussion about that too, because at the beginning we said, well, we are going to do an intervention for sure, and then it was like, 
are we going to do an intervention? Because if people here are not wanting an intervention, why should we do an intervention? So uh, it was also a discussion. And f for now, at this point, we don't probably we want to. Inter we said we leave it open. If there is something, once that the book is done, it's easier also for the people to see other ideas, other proposals. And if then they say like, oh, okay, it looks great, and this idea of about recovering this area could be great then we can do the intervention. But if no one shows any interest there, we are not going to go and change the <laughs> landscape because we want to do an intervention. So that was also the idea of like the, the, the like ideas that you can th do. And also if they want to do this, the people working there, they want to go out and put this and, and have this bench, they can do it because it's open knowledge for whoever, but we are not going to do it for them. So th that that was also the idea of, why we were thinking of not doing an intervention. But it, it was also very much discussed because obviously it's like a strange decision. Like, are we, you're going to propose a lot of interventions, but then you're not going to do them. But then we said like, well, okay, why do we have to do them? We can also propose them and people can do them like if they want, but. Did you have uh, any dialogue with the local um, institution. Yeah, that is another question. I mean, we had we presented the project to the managing group of Thorothaure of the area, the ones who are going to do the Sahadit thing, just for them to know. Then we had a meeting with someone in the in the town hall, informal meeting, because this is another question. We haven't asked money from the uh, from the city hall because the city hall has been neglecting the area for a very long time and this relates a bit to what was Maria saying of doing political works or doing them politically. So we discussed in the group of patrons and no one wants to ask money to the city hall because we have the impression that if the city hall pays for it they are going to wash their hands and say like oh look how many interesting th we do, things we do with this when they are actually abandoning the people in that area and have had them for 30 years. That's what, that's what I meant actually with the idea of sometimes people don't need art, what they need is other solutions. So we are not going to give the possibility to the city hall to say, oh, look, no, we haven't, uh, they still have high water every two months, but we did this w beautiful book. So people in the patrons group don't want to ask money from the city hall, and I completely <laughs> support that. Like They prefer not to do it than to pay it with the money from the city hall, which I think it's a very interesting position from them too. Uh, so. Uh, we h we went to the city hall to have this informal fit meeting with this woman to to tell her we were doing it you know like more like a cordial thing and also because we wanted that once the book is made that it can get to people who have the possibility to de to have take decisions on this space so that they see it but not we don't need that they support it but we wanted to know if she thought that we could get to this pe like that people could have a look at this. But we don't want to ask money from them. So uh, it's, that's also a reason why in this moment we're in a complicated situation because we have asked money from Gobierno Vasco, but we haven't got it. And uh, this year there have been less money and more people, so we didn't get it. Also, also because of <coughs> other, uh, because we also got money last year for the pre-project. So last year we didn't know because it wasn't written, they have included it this year, that if you got money for the, the same project the year before, you cannot ask for money this year. It's the first year they put that, so we didn't get money for this. So now we are going to ask Eremuak to see if we get the, the money for the... But we don't want to ask money from the city hall, and we actually could prefer not to ask... This is more a controversial thing. Like, for example, some of the people in the patron group, they don't have problems for, with asking money to the Comisión Gestora, which is like the managing group, because they say they are going to destroy the place whatsoever, so at least we take money from them, you know, before. So it's it's <laughs> like uh, some people have like different, but in principle, we are not asking money from none of them. So we still have like the regional Diputación, but we don't know if we can get something from them, provincial government. So we've been meeting people just for them to know that we are doing it, but not really asking. And for example, the guy from the Comisión Gestora, he liked the one who's doing the Saha Hadid plan, he liked it. And he said like, how much money do you need? And we were like, 5,000. And you could see in his face, it was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he was like, Good. So I have the impression if we wanted the money from them, maybe we could get it because for them 5,000 is nothing. But we still, we want to try other things before getting their money. And, and I know there's no clean money, but I think in this case, it's very clear, like the city hall has been abusing that area 
for many many years so we really don't want to do it and the patrons don't want so i think it's it's we shouldn't so uh yeah so this was one of the discussions the participation one then now as i said because we don't have the funding we still don't know if the f if there's going to be a book maybe there's only the web page and then we don't need to do the book we are still like maybe the book is in pdf and we don't really need to print it we have we we will see and for example that changed we said well at the beginning it was first the book and then the web page and then now it's more like well if we ha can't have the pdf in the web page you know maybe at this moment we don't need to print it maybe it can wait for two years and we can print it in two years and people can download it in the meantime so it's also a possibility that you know it's like we're thinking about how which form it's going to take and then another interesting thing is that one of the proposals of andrea was to uh, do a bench take, take a kind of benches that are in the area and make it high so that you could look from the there are quite a lot of gardens that are actually they are like places where buildings were and they were destroyed at some place at some time and now the greenery has grown and there are like gardens but you cannot get in because they are private spaces they are private plants so she did uh, one of the <coughs> ideas that she had one of these proposals was to do a high bench so that you can get to the bench and see the garden sitting in the bench even if you cannot enter yeah, that, that, that she's got some really nice ideas. And for example, the girl who's one of the architects who's a patron said, okay, I will take that idea and me and my partner in the architecture group, we are going to make it. So, uh, because that's also the idea that you can make it if you want. So, yeah, the idea is that it's open source ideas. <laughs> you, if you want to, you use them. So now she asked for money for doing the bench and well she didn't get it now but she's going to try still and maybe she will do that bench for example like a prototype of of an idea so and we and that was also funny because i was talking to arancha arancha is the like the let's say the the person who's in charge of getting in contact with the foundation and she was the one who who started the relationship between the foundation and the association and uh, and she was telling me like well i don't like the bunch the bench idea so much and i said like well it doesn't matter if we like it or not because if it's open source people can do it you cannot tell them not to do it you know it's like the idea is there if they want to do it they do it like it's not in our hands anymore so and she's like yeah well that's true <laughs> so it's there like interesting things coming up with that uh yeah and I was saying in the case of the contract in the morning, for example, in this case, the association did a contract and because of also their background, they work in another, they work in a program of artists in enterprises, associations and institutions. So they have more a uh, management view and experience. And the contract they did for Andrea said that if she did, if we didn't get the money for the production in two years, they wouldn't they could pay her only 80 percent of the fees and uh, actually and there was a discussion because andrea said well no it's not fair because i have to do the work anyway <laughs> yeah. yeah because of course she has to do i mean she's going to process all the information and give form to it even if we don't get the money for the book so uh, so it was a very interesting discussion because i completely agreed with andrea in this case but i was thinking for example if it's um i don't know what example I thought of an example, but I don't remember which. Imagine that it's like uh, that someone has done a prototype, but then the biggest of a sculpture, but then the biggest work of the sculpture is really the production of it and, and has to spend two weeks like following the process. In that case, a lot of the work comes after. So there you can have a discussion about, well, 80% maybe is fair for the idea and the prototype, and then the 20% can be related. Like it depends on the work. So the people in the association were like, well, so should we use this as a model? And I was like, well, we cannot, because it depends on what project is coming next. Maybe it doesn't work for next project. So it's also, you also have to adapt in each case, which I suppose, like you were saying with Maria Rido, now you have to think about the distribution. So depending on the project, you have to think on very different things. Yeah. So I don't know if you have more. Yeah, isn't it a great idea? Yeah, I think it's I really think nice. It's the best thing. Yeah. I, I was really thinking that the, the idea of the, the children in 
uh, in this area in, in Ferrothala it makes a lot, a lot of sense. Also because it's to maintain the memory of a place that we don't know if it's going to continue and, and maintain it in the, in, the, in the brains of the people that are yeah. going to grow. Yeah. Somehow it has, no, in, in the, that's... Maria, let's do it together. Yeah, let's do it. I, I, I <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. I really. I, I was thinking that it's. I'm not only one artist. Uh, suddenly, I was thinking, like in a series of, of uh, books or something. It would be great. For children, that 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 could happen in in that has sort of sort of like a background. Yeah. It? So you can have something that. Uh, and how do you imagine sort of sort of in the future, or how it's nowadays, or or an adventure in, in different places? Yeah. So you can, you can, yes, you can discover how it's... Let's do it together. <laughs> we, tell, we tell Andrea to do the, f the first one, adventure one, and then we invite other people to do like the, the memory one. Oh, let's talk, let's talk. Stop the streaming. We have to... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's gonna be so good. If you get to do that, oh, well, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be great. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have more comments or questions or ideas or things or that you want to say about? Yeah. Is it um, did it ever happen uh, in uh, the new Platonist network that uh, the children who the mediator refused a commission from the Petros. I don't know. I, d I don't know because I don't know. There are like 200 projects, so <laughs> I don't know all of them at all. <coughs> I was just wondering uh, if uh, there are always uh, associations not drawn from the association and the groups, informal groups of people asking for uh, uh, outputs or uh, like there can be companies. Well, there is one. Okay, so the thing is that it can be normally the group of patrons doesn't represent an institution or an enterprise. They are representing only themselves. And uh, so even in the case of the of the hospital, for example, the people worked in the hospital, but they were not representing the hospital. And that is something that other mediators have told us that we have to be very careful with because sometimes you get someone from the institution who is actually not playing their role but the role of the institution and you have to be careful with that because of course it's not their interest but the interest of the of well and if it's an institution still you can play with it but if it's an enterprise it can be really like it can really go in completely different directions it depends on what it is but for sometimes I know there have been some ideas that have come from specific, like for example, there was one that was uh, uh, a math park. It was a m mathematical institute and they wanted to do a park for children with mathematics. So all the games were with mathematics and uh, they did it with uh, Jessica Stockholder, I think it's her name, you know, like the one represented by Carras Mojic. And it's a really nice park, like a maths park where you can jump from one number to another, you have to make calculations. And I think that idea came from the Math Institute as an institution and then they work with different people in the group. But for example, there's a very, very interesting case, which is a strange case, uh, which is the case of Nina Montman in Hamburg, because actually she worked the completely uh, completely opposite way because what she did was uh, because of course I mean I've told you like the the idea of the of the project and I, I think the the idea of the project is really interesting and I really if if I didn't I wouldn't be working on it really uh, uh, here it works um, but it is true that uh, some I mean there are things that can look very ideal and then maybe they are not so ideal and for example I was telling you that I heard some some mediators really say like this prog program is the representation of democracy and I'm like well I don't really like when people use the word democracy in art because I think they're I mean it's really big word for you know we have five people in our group you cannot say that it's a democratic representation it can be more uh, yeah they are not representing anyone, you know, they are on their own name, their own interest, you know, it's uh, for me, this idea of democratic, I mean, it might be, it's more interesting for me, and it's more related to the civil society, really, for me, than something coming up from a uh, government, but I wouldn't say it's democratic, so it, you have something, so the thing is that Nina Montman, uh, she thought about it in a completely different way, and uh, where is it, wait, uh, here. 
So the thing is that she wanted to work. She thought it was interesting to work with a new area of um, of Hamburg, which uh, is apparently I don't know Hamburg very well, but in the harbor apparently they have built a lot of super new buildings and a lot of enterprises are moving there, and it's like the new city of Hamburg. And um, so she wanted to work there uh, about this area. And actually, she knew everybody. This is a quite special. I don't know if I should say this in streaming, but she w wanted to uh, work with Tarun Faroki. So she wanted Tarun Faroki to say something about that place. So what she did, she did it the other way around. So she already had the artist that she had thought of, and she already had the area that she had thought of, and then she started to look for a partner. And this is a super interesting case. I mean, not uh, only as n new patrons, but as an artistic project and, and what it gave. I think it's just brilliant because what she what she did was she got in contact with this group, the Quick Partner team, which is uh, uh, who had moved to this place, like new enterprise place, and they are people who create uh, business packages for enterprises. So like promotion packages and, and strategies. So very, very specific, like development of super big enterprises and big capitalism systems. And so she asked them if uh, they wanted to do a work with Hanun Faruqi. And uh, surprisingly, they said, why, why, why not? So yes. And uh, they were, uh, Harun Faroki went to the meetings for a long, long time, I think like a year or two or something like two different meetings. The thing is that at some point they saw that they, they had to develop a new pro a new product. I think it's called a new product. Yeah, a new product. So a new kind of strategy to move in the, like in the interstices of uh, of uh, capital uh, organization. And he, uh, Harun Faroki was following this process and he did a video. He did a he did a, a film of all these people discussing how to make profit, and, and I'm thinking <laughs> the discussion we were having, and uh, and uh, this is the the interesting part. He showed it to the people in the company, and they liked it. They screened it in the presentation to the art world, and it was a scandal because everyone in the art world and uh, in the cultural world was saying like, "This is absolutely immoral. Look at these people, how they are trying to sell like a product in a, like a, a completely into neo-capitalism, trying to make the best money of 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 people, blah blah blah." So people in the art world were scandalized, but the people from the enterprise didn't understand why. So that was a very interesting thing because they said like, well, this is our job. What do you want us to like? This is what we do. What is the surprise? And they were, they saw it more like a representation of their work and they felt really recognized with it. But for many people in the world of culture, it was like scandalous to see how these people, like what is the interstices of how the neoliberalism works. So it, it was really, I think it's super interesting as a work of art, like uh, how both like they don't feel at all like, insulted or, or mal like like uh, they think it's a good representation of themselves and they feel proud of what is in that video but it's really like scandalous for for people in the cultural ground to see it i think it's super interesting case and then of course then the company after the, at the beginning they were very happy but then they were they were feeling really bad about their reactions from outside so they also felt like not tricked by the artist, ne uh, neither by my Nina Montman or something like that, but they felt uncomfortable because they didn't understand what was happening in the situation. So I think it's like a super interesting case. Oh. Yeah, 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 I was thinking the same. <laughs> was it like, I mean, obviously they've been meeting for a year or two, it was deeply involved in the process, but, you know, was, was it meant to be sort of this critical stance yeah very much part of the, yeah. the narrative yeah i mean it was it was meant to be i haven't seen the video that's the bad thing but it was meant to be like um, quite critical in the sense of this is how capitalism works this is how people organize uh, like social relationships and um, and immaterial products and immaterial labor it was intended to be critical but for what nina said uh, it was never hidden at the same time, you know. That is what she was very surprised that the process was going well because 
everyone knew what was the point of view. <laughs> like they they had seen. She said she organized other meetings with the people before she introduced them to Faroki. She organized meetings with the people who participated in the video and showed them other other videos of Faroki, so they knew what kind of work also Faroki was doing and what kind of stand he normally takes. So I mean, obviously, normally he's not super direct in his videos. No, he contraposes different positions. Critical, but it's not like he's not like this is the bad guys. This is the bad guys. It's a bit more soft. <laughs> so I don't think he went like look at these people. I think it was quite documentary actually. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That is addressed to a certain sort of practitioner, you should also prepare the community for that. Yeah, yeah. Because that, I mean, that is very non sensitive towards the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, of course, that's why, that's why <laughs> I actually didn't show this project because for me, these people, I'm sorry for them, I'm sorry for Nina, Nina, hi. I'm sorry, but these people are not patrons. I mean, because they are, they are, they, how to say, like, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a representation of them which they agreed with but i don't think they agreed on seeing themselves being criticized but so many i mean i i i probably they didn't expect and in that sense i don't consider they are i don't think the work is responding to what they need or they want it's responding to what nina and hanun faroki think they can say about them you know it's more trying to and of course, at the same time, Nina would tell you, like, well, what we are doing is putting themselves confronting to a community that exists and that thinks that about them. But I don't know if they wanted that. So I don't know if they are, you are putting them in a position that it's not what they were asking for either. I don't know. I think. <laughs> at the, I mean, it depends. That is the question. Uh, they didn't have a problem with being with the video, yeah. per se. They were very shocked by the reaction. They felt very violent with the reaction. I don't know. I think it's an. I mean, I, I I don't have like a very. I think it's a super interesting project, but I think it 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 is. It's got some problematic things for me. Yeah, me too. We should ask Nina <laughs> to send it because when I asked her, she didn't have it. So at that moment, so I didn't see it. But uh, I think it's an interest. I think it's also an interesting way of that. Yeah, Nina. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's yeah, it's an interesting project also in how to use it in another way yeah so i mean like i'm not going to say like nina did good or wrong but it's another way of using this the strategy but i i i must say i don't think these men are are patrons in the sense of the other projects because i don't think they i don't know i don't i i don't know if they were aware of what could happen well i think other other patrons it's not that you're also always aware because for example with our project there are things that we don't know how it's going to work and there are things that already happened that we didn't expect to work like this but at least it's a surprise for everyone <laughs> not only for them right. I mean, even you can expect something that will happen but you're always thinking that it's not going to happen when we make a film of Maria Rubino for instance we were aware that we were talking about Kucha, we were talking about the Guangheng, we were talking about the city hall, obviously, but the same things that, that somehow I say I was talking today, but it was together in a video with, with, uh, with the material of the Basque, uh, the Basque uh, television. We, we organized the premiere in, in, the, in the film festival of the city and the director was one of the guys that was more involved in the video. We, uh, we used, because he's a filmmaker also, so Maria used a uh, part of uh, his films. I mean, he was really, really, he was interviewed. We were with him many times. The same day that the premiere was organized, he called me, it was, the, the premiere was at eight, he called me at four. He told me, Maria, what, what kind of images are gonna appear on the film? I was like, we sent you the film like one month or two months ago. I mean, you didn't have the chance to see it. We were in a press release together, and I was putting the trailer. <coughs> the trailer was behind him, and he didn't do neither this to, to, to see the, the, the video. So suddenly he was like, I want to see that before. So and he 
be censured. We were not able to. Yeah. And the censure is, is so heavy that nowadays we are not uh, uh, we we are not able to 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 make any uh, presentation. I mean, we we can't suggest any program now for. for really. Still, yeah, yeah. He's always saying, "No, I mean, I'm busy. I'm traveling. I'm really." really that the real censor is coming uh, later because then he, we we decided to put all the film in Sony. He came, he, he asked for a public apology. Yeah, because you said that he wanted, in that moment, you said he wanted to apologize and he was like ashamed and blah, 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 no? Uh, yeah, can we cut this? <laughs> but, uh, but um, I don't know, and in that case, Viviana, it was not so clear. I mean, even we were talking about things that could be difficult, but we were not really in this kind of reaction. Once that happened, that then you can think, well, what do you want? I mean, obviously you are, but you never know. Yeah, I think, I think in that sense it would be interesting to see what Nina and especially Faroki have to say, because I also, I suppose, Nina also wasn't working with them all the time, so maybe she didn't know also how they were going to react, and Faroki was working with them, but I don't know what how he felt. I mean, I think they probably knew that the, the, the it wasn't going to be the same reaction, in the, but maybe they didn't think it was going to be so violent or so critical, or or maybe they thought it was not bad that it was so critical and that it, it was, I don't know, I really don't know. There's definitely an element of exploitation in it to me. Oh. You know, exploitation. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, and it's interesting because it's the reversal exploit. It's, it's, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> kind of in the direction that we think it's in, like this yeah. like very capitalist subject matter, <laughs> you know. And but the, the fact that yeah. you need to knowingly expose yourself to a situation, and then you need to go in into a situation with complete transparency and understanding, and um, and have the people that are putting <coughs> you in that situation be, you know, just be forthcoming and, and prepare you. And so, and the art world is, I mean, it's, I can understand why it's shocking. It's completely like operates on its own rules and has its own ethos and it art, its own vocabulary and way of understanding things. So, you know, they didn't know yeah. what they were walking into. They were ambushed. Yeah, what and I was wondering was if... But this is the responsibility of the artist and... Well, yeah. I think it's the responsibility of, I mean, I don't know if it's the, I don't know whose responsibility, I don't know if it's the responsibility of the artist, but I think that Maybe you know the, the the curator, the organization, someone should, some, someone should provide some context, some awareness. Yeah. Imagine that something happens. Imagine yeah. that we are in a stream. Imagine imagine that something that you say is now is super polemic, or something that I have said this morning. I don't know the the, the contract that I was showing, the, uh, the 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 someone discover who I was talking about, and the artist came and how it's possible that this is good. If it's something like that happened, mm -hmm. who is the who is the responsible? I mean, I'm exploited by Bessel because I was in the streaming and I was not really aware <laughs> of what. You, I mean, you know what I mean? Because I mean, the reaction if something happens and the reaction outside is totally violent. I mean, sometimes. But I, but I think that that's a very different situation. What you're what you're saying because you know we are being filmed and documented to our knowledge, and we understand the audience to an extent of who's going to be doing that, that film. It's not like it's not like a million people are watching us. <laughs> yeah. I don't really care what we're saying right now. I know, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean like what I'm saying is we know our audience. Yeah. We know this context. Yeah. We know each other. Yeah. There's yeah. sort of this little circle of trust. Yeah. You know what I mean? And these these people just didn't know, really. Yeah. You, know, you know what's a possibility yeah. that I've yeah. thought, but this is also complete speculation, is that, you know how we were saying before that when Maria went to this talk in, in Barcelona with the people from the, from the, from the town council, that, that actually you can have a conversation with them. That I, I have had this impression with people from the town council, that you have a conversation and you are saying one thing in a very critical way and they are saying exactly the same thing in a very positive way. So what I wonder is if it happened, because I could see it happen, like Faroki telling them like people are going to be super critical with what you do and then telling like, no way, you know, like, because you have, you don't have that parameter in your mind. So, so I, I, w I wonder, like, I'm completely speculating because I don't know how it happened, but if something like that could happen, because I could imagine 
someone from the city hall going to a talk about the Bilbao effect in the art world and being completely smashed by people and then being completely surprised because they didn't expect it and you telling them like people are going to be very offended about what you've done in Bilbao and then saying like she's crazy what she's yeah. saying yeah, yeah. That's so, true. so Actually, you know the video the amazing transformation of Bilbao yeah 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 I, 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 I saw you yes. I saw you in the barn yes yeah, yeah it's true yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Were, I think we have. Uh, I was going to put it, but I think we have to leave soon, or not? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we have to leave soon, uh, but uh, I mean, we could stay a little bit more after uh, the thing uh, stops. Okay, so then I'm going okay. to put the. the yeah, so good no. because I think. This is a good example. We started this video that is not very profound. Yeah. 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 Yeah.